love line may contain sexually oriented content. 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 Listener discretion is advised. Adam Corolla and Dr. Drew. Love line, coast to coast. Hey, everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is uh, Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Lisa Durgan's our guest tonight. Lisa, I pronounced everything right, right? Yeah, you did. Good times. Lisa's uh, on the uh, cover of, uh, well, it's going to be this month's stuff. It's not out yet, right? It's out now. Oh, it is? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, week. today. Came out today. <laughs> all, the, all the guys had it out front. Yeah. The sploozers? The sploozers. Yeah. Part, part spaz, all loser. Sploozer. All the, <laughs> yeah. These guys with the magazine. Yes. They're, now they're currently pulling the windshield wipers off of my car and <laughs> u- using using them to actually carve sploozer into, into my hood. That's well, nice. your car's right next to mine, so I hope they don't get my next. Yeah, yours will be uh, actually covered with a... Uh, fine don't, coat of don't. semen oh, but I knew it's that. true I knew. it's true there's a lot of guys that are into that yeah, stuff I know. they enjoy that stuff uh. all right lisa is uh on uh, fox sports net uh, net's nfl show which is uh on saturdays uh, after the pac 10 show and then on uh, sundays at uh, 10 a.m to uh noon and uh, chris myers tommy davidson and oh oh this is the new show right yeah have you seen it yeah, yeah, I'm a big <laughs> fan. I, I, what do you think I got that TiVo for? Yeah, no, no. I'm, a, I'm a big fan of uh, Michael Irvin. He's great. He's funny. Boy, yeah. what a story, huh? Yeah, Michael. He's come around. Uh, well, Michael, well, first off, the uh, black NFL troublemaker who ends up becoming a uh, ordained minister. Right. Not, not headline news anymore. <laughs> How many, what percentage of black men over forty or ordained ministers? Have you seen, I, what percent? Thirty-seven. Have you? Have you seen, <laughs> that seems like more like sixty. Have you seen his his preacher routine? Oh, listen, it's very I, I, funny. I don't. I don't think it's a routine. <laughs> no, no, Drew. but, but he, I, no, no, he does a funny version. Of I it. haven't seen it, but oh, it, it's it's incredible. He's char- he can charm a room, so I'm yeah. sure he's pretty good with that. He yeah. he is. Uh, yeah, he he dresses uh, to the nines. Hey, I like that about him. No, I'm listen. No, no better guy to have uh, on your uh, NFL crew than yep. uh, this guy. I mean, here's a guy who's an All Pro, has uh, a couple of Super Bowl rings, and uh, talks to talk, walks to walk, dresses uh, like Al Sharpton. <laughs> Sounds like an, an, an Eddie Murphy character. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm uh, I'm in love with that guy. I really am. Lisa's also the uh, new St. Pauli girl. <clears throat> what, so we do posters and uh, like sign sign the calendars and I've stuff? I've actually done all the work. Now I just represent them for a year. I've shot everything. And, uh, you know, once a year they pick some girl that they think represents just the all-American well, actually, it's a German beer, yeah. but you know what I mean. It's it's just All somebody American that represents Jew killer, yes, fun love and yeah, yeah, good times, good times. And, and you're now you probably like got one of those things in your in your contract where you can't be drinking like a Budweiser <laughs> or Schlitz, right? But they don't let you do that. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if they mentioned Schlitz. <laughs> Maybe I'm living Pam, in the past. Schlitz, I'm not sure. Primo, <laughs> Paps, Blue Ribbon, all the big ones, all the big ones. Well, they treat me right, so I'm gonna. But there is, they have those things. I remember when Jimmy did, like uh, Miller Lite. Oh yeah. He couldn't be seen holding the butt. Like if you want to go out and shoot around a golf, I and mean, forget about filming. Yeah. He wouldn't get, he'd pour it into a cup. He wouldn't right. want to be seen waving around the uh, Bud bottle. It's do just they, like Do they my... have that? Well, I don't walk around carrying beer everywhere, but when I do drink beer, St. Pauli's a really good beer. But they tell beer. you that, right? Yeah, I mean, of course. I'm yeah, representing. It's, not, it's, fine. it's just like with the endorsements I have with golf. I can't be playing with some other, you know, golf ball and, and certain clubs if I'm represented by, you know, certain How names. did you get going on the golf? How do I go on the how golf? Did, how did you get going with that? I've played my whole life. Uh, um, did some of your family play? Or? My family, my parents, my grandparents, my dog's are, are name was from, Bogey. Are you from San Diego? Or <laughs> I no? am from San Diego, so. so I grew up playing. Actually, my dad, my dad was in the military, so I played in a lot of military courses. And huh. um, I started coaching, having coaching lessons at 12. And my mom and I used to play twice a week. And I got really good at a young age. And... Um, so I got endorsed by a lot of things in, really? oh. from doing Playboy and golf. Really, there's not too many women that play in this town and no, can no, play well. No, not so. attractive 
not Asian <laughs> women. I kick my dad right in the nuts <laughs> one more time for not taking you on the golf course. And for just not doing anything or being into nothing. I've never seen a golf club or nothing. I got thrown off a driving range, you know. How did you do that? The guy said if I sliced uh, one more into the tennis courts, <laughs> I was going to have to leave. And then he stood there while I teed it up and proceeded to uh, slice it uh, oh, no. right into the tennis court. You yep. need to close the face of your club. Yeah, you, you got to show me what's going on because yeah, uh, I, got, I got a mad, mad slice and I've been taking lessons. I mean, just sort of verbal, let, you know, yeah, open the club, close the club. You're not following through. You're <laughs> dipping your shoulder. You're not flexing your knee. And I've got an extra 20 feet of slice now. <laughs> All, uh, five years of advice in, in club modification, this and that. And I, and this is a bad slice, I want you to know, because a buddy of mine who's an avid golfer said, we're going to go out to the driving range, we're going to buy a big bucket, I'm going to sit down, light a cigarette, and watch you hit that bucket, and by the time we're done with this bucket, we'll work your slice right out. And uh, when we're done with that bucket, he was like... He gave up. Yeah, I don't know, man. You know, I gotta, I, tell you? I gotta say about golf, it's just like working out, or I don't know, There's everybody seems to have the right thing to say, and you know, I have a coach... I listen to my coach. So whenever I'm out there and somebody wants to give me a little bit of advice, just being a girl, I just, you just got to nip it and say, leave it. Yeah, but you <laughs> you have a game. You don't have a crazy slice that goes in a, a, another fairway. Well, at one point I did. I was like slicing for a good month or two and I couldn't figure out what I did and I had to rechange, you know, my, my grip. Actually, yeah. it was my grip. Uh, yeah, and not closing right my there. face, so yeah. that's why I suggested that. But look, I'm doing exactly what I said not to do. I know, but I'm, I'm left-handed, so I've, <laughs> so I've been told uh, to just stop it. Oh, really? But I play golf right-handed, uh, which is actually, right. no, you doesn't... should do that. Yeah, <laughs> too late now. I've spent all this time sucking from the left side of the, the tee there. I, it's, I couldn't imagine going and sucking from the right side of the tee, but... You, you you give me a little golf lesson like during the commercial. I just I gotta get this slice. It's it's no fun for me. You understand? I, I can't enjoy myself. I go I play these crappy you know B C celebrity tournaments and I just slice the goddamn ball all over the place. It's pathetic. And then you're on the green in four and you're three putting. You and, and you you make everyone nervous too because you're an attractive woman. Let me tell you something, Drew. Psychologically, I was playing uh, in a foursome on some sort of like. Kings tournament or something, the hockey team out in, I don't know, Simi Valley. And I was playing with a couple guys who were playing pretty well and knew what they were doing. And I wasn't doing too badly. And I, I don't know if I, I think I was with Jimmy and he was doing okay. And we played like eight holes and everything was fine. And we're, we were, they were doing this like scramble thing. And we were a couple below par or something, which is easy to do if you do it that way. And, uh, but everyone was playing pretty decent golf. And then we got to the eighth hole with the hot chick who's sitting there. And she's sitting there on like a folding chair. And she's like the Budweiser girl. And she's going to give you a brewski. <laughs> and, uh, you know, whoever gets it closest to the pin gets a case of Budweiser or something. They do this at these celebrity tournaments. All four guys just whacked it just, <laughs> just right, right into the water. Like everybody caved completely. The idea of a hot chick sitting in a folding chair 10 feet behind you when you're teeing the ball up, everyone goes to hell. <laughs> everybody, you, you everybody swing, screwed you up. You swing with too much force and hit it over the... All I know is, is out of the four guys on the previous eight holes, one of the four guys had a good enough tee shot to play it. You know, it was in the fairway. It was decent. It was good enough to uh, everyone play that ball. Yeah. And that's how they do it in these tournaments. No one had a playable ball. <laughs> That's bad. Yeah, and and then I think we actually took like two mulligans or something. Like two of the good guys hit over again. Still nothing. Oh. Yeah, everyone just sat there. To, you know, we should just tuck their genitalia between our legs <laughs> and, and wet. You don't play, Doctor Drew? No, he's the only all. doctor that doesn't all. play. But if but, but if, if you're with a beautiful you, woman, it sucks. You can't focus. You're I'm no getting anxious good. just talking about golf. You do. You yeah. get anxious. Yeah. Why? Why? Because I, I cannot, I mean, it's really, like, retarded with a club. <laughs> and if I had four hours, it's like a billion other things I'd do at that time. And that's But, thing that, but see, in. that's the key. The key is is it, it forces you just to walk around and do nothing for, for four <laughs> hours. <laughs> it, that's the whole point. Yeah, like you got too much. It, it forces you to stop doing stuff. Yeah. That's you got too much on your plate. Yeah. Yeah. You, you need to chill out. But, yes, <laughs> we're going to get rid of my slice before uh, the night's over. Sarah? Yeah. You're 18? Yeah. What's up? Um, I have this boyfriend that I've been with for about two years, a little over, and he is into um, 
anal sex. He wants to try it, and it makes me pretty nervous, you know? Mm -hmm. It's not something you want to do. No, not really, but I don't know. I think that he's weird pretty much. Okay, well, why would you want to... First of all, why are you with a guy that you think is weird? Well, no, just this idea that he has. Then why would you engage in something with him that you thought was weird and unpleasant and you don't want to do it? No, what I'm asking you is, is it normal? Is it? It's common right now. Guys kind of preoccupy about this. <laughs> it's a trend. I, it's it is like, kind you of know, a trend. Like when we were, we were young, uh, certain dance steps were... Uh, Inline skates. Electric slide. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Skating. Yeah, pit bull attacks. It, it, certain things uh, become in vogue for a while. And then right now, it's the, uh, these are the anal years. The keister I think. years. The keister years, I yeah. think, when we look back on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a suggestion. Yeah. Don't do anything you don't want to do. And oh, if you're yeah. not comfortable, don't do it. And he should respect that. Well, yeah, and he does. I'm just wondering if it's a normal thing or if... It's a pretty common thing these days. It is. Yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. Yeah. All right. You, uh, no, I'm, I've not reached a consensus. Adam has his theory of why, but I, I, can't quite, I can't quite get it. Why what? Why guys are sort of into this now. Guys are into it because guys are envelope pushers. You, you said <laughs> I mean, it's a, the list. No, envelope's a euphemism for the ass. I see. I, there, as, no, no, got, that wasn't a metaphor. No, I, was, I was actually talking about the ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, never I heard it called a manila envelope? Got it, envelope, yeah, yeah. No, no, here's, here's what it is. Uh, you, you take a look at anything. Take, okay, guys push everything along. You see, you, you take a look at, like, uh, BMX riding right. uh, 10 years ago. Guys were doing a cross-up. Now they're doing double flips and yeah. stuff. You know, everything has to keep going forward. Take a look at the NBA. Barely saw any dunking 25 years ago. Now everything's crazy. Like stuff you couldn't imagine is going on. And, and, and it's guys shoving this along. It's a physical thing that guys got to push along. Guys got to push sex along, too, if you think about it. Yeah, so I mean, think about what was <clears throat> acceptable and what was exciting, what you were happy to have in high school as opposed to what the average high schooler is into now. Do you see what I'm saying? So when I see a half pipe or whoop dees, I should think envelope. A think <laughs> anal envelope. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Okay, taking notes. You say envelope, I say envelope. Envelope, envelope. Okay. Envelope. Envelope? Mm -hmm. How do you spell that? It's E-N, e right? E -N. It's envelope. Sounds like envelope to me. <laughs> all right, wait, that's why the dictionary sits here, Adam. It's all right. Well, It'll probably be both ways in here. E-N. E -N. Both ways. You're all right. You're okay. But like, it's all right, Adam. Okay. All right, here we go. But how do you say the word envy? Envy? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. All right. Uh, ooh, ooh. Uh, uh, in, you know, in, Brian makes a in, point. He, he writes, uh, he writes uh, on, entourage, entourage, which is uh, not Interestingly, entourage. in uh, its envelope. It's envelope. No, no, no. I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. It's envelope in the dictionary. Yeah, because everybody pushes the envelope. They don't push the envelope. <laughs> There's no, there's no test pilot that's going to push the envelope. No. Jeez. The envelope isn't even in the dictionary. Oh, yes, it is. No, it is. Both are in here. All yeah, right. They both are in here. All right. Look up, uh, look up uh, labia and labia next. Jade? Yeah? You're 17? Mm-hmm. Or uh, what does my grandmother say? Uh, clitoris. Uh, clitoris and clitoris. Go ahead, Jade. It's wait, wait. Phil, Phil. My grandmother yeah. corrects me. She's like, it's not... Clitoris, it's clitoris. She's 85? 89. 89. You had this conversation with your mother? I mean, grandmother. your grandmother? Yeah, but to be fair to her, she was 85 when we had this. I was listening to the radio show, and I heard you say clitoris. <laughs> it's pronounced clitoris. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, well, <laughs> we always say clitoris. Clitoris. And, I mean, clitoris. And she's like... You say she, clitoris? She's like... Uh, Emery Kennerick is a doctor, and he says clitoris. I like what this. You know, when you get old, you have one friend with a degree, and they become Mr. Owl. I gotta listen to this old coot about everything now. Emery Kennerick says, like every sentence starts with that because a guy read a book, and I said, "Well, what do you think Dr. Drew is? He's a doctor, but see, you you don't count because you're one of my friend right. doctors. Of course, it's like I you're must some be a jack off I went to junior right. college right. with." Right. All right, so it, but it is it's clitoris or clitoris. Yeah, the, the, yeah. Thank you. We, we by the way weren't trying to figure that one out. Oh, we weren't. <laughs> we weren't. We weren't. Lisa didn't. I thought she asked that. No, I didn't ask. Jade. Yeah. You're 17. Mm -hmm. What's up? Um, I was just curious. I'm 
I guess you would say a habitual pot smoker. I've been smoking for about two years straight now. And in the past month, I've been having some strange dreams where they involve me doing harder drugs like coke and heroin. Have you done those drugs? Well, I've done coke, which was laced in the weed, but that was all. Get a little, uh, the, the, the coke was uh, sprinkled on the weed? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yummy. Hey, Jake, Jake, speak up a little bit. Get closer to your telephone there. You're not really registering here. Oh, okay. There Is you go. Better? Much better. Much better. Okay. We hear her, but it wasn't broadcasting. I see. All right. All right. Um, well, here's the deal. What, what happens with marijuana addiction in essentially all cases, it's somewhere along the way the pot stops working. Mm-hmm. Is it still working for you? It is. I just did like 20 minutes ago, and it's fine. <laughs> but is it still, <laughs> is it still like, like it was when you first fell in love with it? Not quite. I have to do a little bit more. Yeah, so and the, I, it's, its effect starts fading over time, and that effect can be a year or it can be 20 years, and yeah. we don't know why it's so variable in different people. But when it stops working so well for you, people start thinking about looking for other solutions. Because mm-hmm. the pot was really just a solution in the first place, right? Mm-hmm. Now, for how you were feeling or God knows what was going on in your life, you, you found this solution. It was great and made everything okay, and now it's not working so well anymore. Yeah. So it's a natural part of the progression, part of the process in the addiction with this drug. Mm-hmm. So what do you think? Well, lately, like, um, because it hasn't been working as well, yeah. I'll take breaks and... Um, well, to keep taking longer breaks. Yeah, because it, it, it was a, I had done it for about two and a half weeks. You, you may also be having a lot of crazy, you'll, you'll have using dreams about pot, too. And uh, maybe the reason it's sort of bleeding into other drugs is because your, your perception of pot right now is it's not going to work. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, 17. Well, if you can't stop. If you're stop, thinking about not doing it, then you should not yeah, do it. There's MA out there. You can get, get a 12-step program going. You'll be fine. Mm, all right. Let's talk to Nadine, who is 19. Nadine? Hello. What's up? Hi, okay, um, the thing is, okay, I'm kind of shy about saying this, um, I like rough sex and everything, and me and my Did you say rough sex? Yeah. All right. Mm. Okay, uh, we've been doing it for like a year and a half now, Mm. and, um, the thing is now that in the middle of when I'm going to have an orgasm, like, my lower abdomen starts hurting a little, but I still keep doing it and everything, but... I was just wondering if that's normal or is there something wrong? Or anything else going on? You've been having abnormal periods or discharge or anything? No. Pain with intercourse otherwise? So what? You've been hurt. Has it been hurting at any other point during your sexual relationship? Anything else makes it hurt? No, just right there. Just right at the end there. I don't know. Well, what are you guys doing for contraception? Uh, well, we used to use condoms. but You I used to use condoms? Yeah. And? I don't use anything. So you're going to get pregnant? No, no. How are you not going to get pregnant? Because right now I'm on my period, so. That doesn't matter. But you, you having sex on your period? Oh, no, no, but not right now. Like, when I don't have it and, you know, it just hurts when... Hey, stay with us here. How, how are you not going to get pregnant? Well, I'm not doing it during... When I have my period or anything, I don't do that. How? But it doesn't matter when you do it. I, I never got... In, Pregnant before. Okay, well, that's like it. When you're going to get pregnant, all right? How, how do you think you were going to avoid it? Hold on a second. I, I really think some of our callers were like, um, they're like frozen <laughs> when the when the ice age hit and we thawed them out, and they're just like they're like natives. Pr- primitive man, yeah. They're primitive man. Yeah. I I never I never got pregnant before because. I won't get pregnant because I've never been pregnant before. Crow fly from right, moon come yeah. from the sky, he, no uh, pregnant. Yeah, and if I do get pregnant, all we got to do is sacrifice a uh, goat or something, <laughs> throw it in a volcano, mm-hmm. That's uh, the baby will go away. Jesus Christ. Nadine. Uh-huh? All right, stay with us here, please. Okay. All right. <clears throat> now, you're not using any birth control. Right. Right. And so eventually... You're going to get pregnant, and you may not. It may not be when you're planning on it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. How are you going to avoid it? Or how is it? How could that not? Hold happen? on. Let me answer. I'm on my period now. <laughs> yeah. How are you going to avoid getting pregnant? Well, I I do want to start taking some birth control pills, but. All right. In the meantime, uh, he's got to wear a condom, right? Yeah. Uh, and yeah. Nadine, listen to me. I can tell by your cadence mm-hmm. uh, and your tone that you're a prime candidate for cranking out a couple of kids uh, before 
your 21st birthday. She could be pregnant right now. You could be pregnant. That, that's what I'm sort of going to build to here is that this you, you could be pregnant. The bleeding could be first trimester pregnancy. You could have an infection. This could be a lot of different things, this pain you're having. It could be nothing. But you've really not been taking proper care of yourself. You, really, you also should be getting regular pap smears since you are sexually active. Your risk for cervical cancer is high. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna make a guess here, Nadine. Uh-huh. Who's, uh huh. Who's what's the age of your oldest brother or sister? Yeah, yeah. Uh, she's twenty. And she's your, twenty. And your mom is forty. No, she's thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. Good time. There you go. Pregnant yeah. at sixteen. Yeah. So there you go. All right, Nadine. Enough uh-huh. said. All right, baby. Let's try to break that cycle, Nadine. Pay attention. All right. Okay. You've done pretty good. I mean, you've crushed your mom's previous record of 16 and a half. <laughs> Made it all the way to 19. Probably with mom all the way, I mean, just on her, I'm sure. Too. Right. Don't yeah. do what I did. Where's the, How many brothers and sisters do you have? Four. I have two. Two sisters. All right. So there's no brothers? No, no brothers. Okay. All right. They're, lock, they're, not they're locked, locked down. down yeah. They're locked down. They don't talk about them. Yeah. All right, Nadine. Uh-huh. Take care of yourself, baby. And uh, listen. You get a gotta, pelvic exam. You, you're 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 an adult now. You gotta gotta get the pelvic exam. Get on the birth control. Do all that good stuff, right? Take control. Yeah, I I I have an appointment for the twenty third. There you go. I don't to do it already. All right. Don't worry in the meantime, but make sure he wears a condom in the meantime. Got to put that Christmas stocking over his dork. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Fill it with Santa special eggnog. Lisa Durgan is our guest tonight. She's uh, currently on the uh, cover of uh, Stuff, and uh, you can uh, find her with the uh, Reverend Michael Irvin. Uh, <laughs> I actually just anchored, uh, just got off the air an hour ago, so it's not just the weekends. It's no. the news updates on Fox. All right. Just so uh, it's all the time. You turn on the Fox Sports Net, and uh, you, uh, you find her. All right. <laughs> Let's uh, take a uh, quick break. We'll be right back. Love Lines with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. 1-800-LOVE-191. We'll be right back. Love Lines brought to you by Trojan, America's number one condom. The most trusted for over 80 years. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Lisa Durgan is our guest tonight. Never uh, never fails. Whenever I look up on the uh, list to find out uh, who's coming up on the show, the guests will always look and want to know what I'm looking at up there. <laughs> and I, I must have a powerful, powerful gaze because... Because I looked. It's not it, a big move. You know, I'm just no, no. I'm looking up and I'm it, reading it. it. Yeah, there. Yeah. Me reading? Ah. Yeah. You smell oil burning when I read? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, Usually it's I got to like put my finger it out and move it along. Like when, even when I read a billboard from my car, yeah. I have to stick my finger out the window, <laughs> no, drag it along. Miller. Miller Light. And yeah, my finger. And people are honking because the signal took the. St. Da, dot. Oh no. <laughs> Pal, pull. Girl spelled with an I. What happened to the U? Yeah, and I have to I have to actually move my finger. It's great. Like this is the biggest. This is why. This is why uh, this TiVo is a curse, actually, because I, I I have to I can't read subtitles fast enough. Like I can't stay up with stuff, so I hit the TiVo. But the TiVo has a little thing at the bottom, a little icon Green that goes strip. across, yeah. and it covers, yes. ironically, the thing that I'm trying to read. And as God of the Witness, TiVo is dangerous. I, I want TiVo in life all the time now. Uh huh. Like, hey, I didn't catch that. Let's, let's roll it. It back. is so popular now. Yeah, yeah. The the greatest part is really it it settles arguments. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you sit there and you watch TV and you go, "Did you see the boom mic?" Yeah. And the person next to you goes. No, no boom bike. And you go, oh, yeah, yeah, popped in, popped in. <laughs> I didn't see anything. You go, oh, yeah, and then you rewind it. You've but... got too much time on your hands, yeah, let yeah. me tell you. <laughs> yeah, baby. You... It's not all I got on my hands. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right. Lee says, uh, currently uh, on the cover of uh, this month's stuff, which is uh, out today, it's the uh, NFL's uh, sexiest sportscaster. Well, that's kind of nice because there are some pretty sexy uh, NFL sportscasters these days. I mean, it seems like in the last 
Well, it's been been happening over the last year or so, but it seems like it's heated up quite a bit, even more so recently. Yes? Yeah. All right. <laughs> That's my interview. Rick? Yes. You're 41? Yes? Yes? Yes. Okay. Let's move on. Oh, come on, come on. No, all right. Go ahead, Rick. Yeah, Adam, uh, Dr. Drew, love your show. Thank you. Uh, got a bit of a problem. I got a, uh, had a major life change a couple of years ago, get ready to retire from the service, and uh, the wife decided she didn't want no more and left me, and I've moved on with my life. And uh, Kids? Uh, Did you have kids? Uh, excuse me? Did you guys have kids? Uh, no, we didn't have any kids. She had uh, stepkids and mm. uh, raised them. I stay in contact with them every now and then, see how they're doing. And, uh, you know, got me a job uh, driving a big truck and bought me a motorcycle and pretty pretty well happy with my life right now. And uh, now all of a sudden she's wanting to get back in my life, and uh, mm -hmm. I really don't want to. Mm -hmm. I don't think I do. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm seeing a 22-year-old girl right now. Yeah. And it's a weekend thing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so what's the problem? Why is there a question here? Well, there's certain aspects I, I miss. Like what? Uh, well, you know, the you know, having someone there at all the time, someone I could talk to at yep. my age level. The the twenty two year old just you know Yeah, but does it have to be this woman? Uh, your, well, your your wife is sort of a there's sort of a pattern emerging here. She has one failed marriage, now another failed marriage. Sounds like a certain amount of chaos. Is she was she uh, like she she strikes me as someone that really has like abandonment issues. Right? If you weren't around well, all the time. Her, 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 her first marriage wasn't a failed marriage. He uh, I guess he committed suicide. Mm -hmm. and, That's you know, we were we were married for almost ten years, and you know, well, I'd done everything I was, I was supposed to do. You know, we got the house. You know. well, why did she leave then? She met some guy on the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, see, that, that's, yeah, that's that's disturbing. Chaos. Yeah, that's disturbing. And let me translate uh, someone I can talk to on my level with the twenty-two year old. Yeah. Fog Hat was the greatest rock band that ever existed. Who's Fog Hat? Oh Christ! <laughs> Who is Fog Hat? <laughs> see? Oh. Christ! No, see, that, right. that's the problem. That's but, but Rick. She, she, let, let me. Yeah, let me. Let's have, she doesn't know. She doesn't know the bands, right? Yeah. Rick. Yeah, but, that's but a problem. The, the suicide husband. Wait, 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 wait. I know they're not talking about anything else. The, the husband that committed suicide was were drugs and alcohol involved with that? Uh, I believe there was. Yeah. Oh. Okay. You, oh. you see, you see okay, the, you see Kraskin. The deal here? All right. Please. Yeah. Ninety-nine percent of people that commit suicide, there's drugs and alcohol. No, no, no. I'm I forget that. I'm just trying to. The pattern with this woman is she has to have the chaos. And Rick was probably a little too stable, in fact. Yeah. Unless she has to get going to the internet, find some other yes, chaotic yes. guys. Yep. Rick, don't yeah. you got your eighteen wheels? <laughs> you got yeah. your you got your hog. You got your twenty two year old who doesn't yeah. uh, know of uh, <laughs> any bands uh, before Nirvana. You're in great yeah. shape. All yeah. right, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Don't go back. Yeah. Have fun. Yeah. It's that, interesting. The pathology is pulling him back. You know, yeah. That's his stuff. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. She's crazy, and Rick's just a little too sane for her. Yeah. Carly? Yeah. You're 17? Yes. What's up? Um, I think I'm neurotic. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, all right. Like, I'm, I've been with my boyfriend, actually. It'll be eight months on... Um, it's, we're coming up on eight months, actually. Mm -hmm. And we've broken up twice, but, I mean, that has nothing to do with it. Like, I'm totally in love with him. He's 17, too. Right. Everything will be fine for, you know, a couple of months, and then, like, we'll be talking on the phone or whatever, and he's like, well, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. For instance, it actually happened tonight. Carly? Yeah. I'm going to ask you to jump ahead and get to the question, and then we'll decide on the fill we need here. I'd like her to actually move past the question into the end of the call. <laughs> Could you do that, Carly? I was, I was pressing for that. but no. Carly, it, I'll it's... tell you what. We'll pick it up from thanks. You guys are great. You've helped a lot. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of the show. No, 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 please. Oh. Well, but what is the question? What is Where are you going with this? Where, what is the question? Carly? Yes. What, what is the question? Where are we going? So we can sort of figure out what we need. What can I do instead of, like, freaking out? And what makes you freak out? Um, that's the problem. I don't know. What do you describe freaking out? Um, hyperventilating, crying. So you have you sort of you have panic attacks. Yeah. And it's when you talk to your boyfriend. No, not all the time. Is it mm. when you talk to your boyfriend? No. Sometimes, yeah. Okay, so is it when you're with him in his presence? No. Is he far away or something? 
No, he lives um, five minutes. No, away. you you just you get to a certain point in the relationship and you start getting wiggy. Yeah, but she's having, she's having full-blown panic attacks, and sometimes panic attacks it's hard to tell what's triggering them. Can you okay, know? I'm on medication for depression. All right, what medicine? Zoloft. Okay, and were you having panic and anxiety as part of your depression? Um, no, I was just suicidal. Okay, it may just be your well. It's more complicated than you think. You should expect better symptom control than you're having. So Zoloft may not be the right medication for you. Good to antidepressant may not be right for you given your symptoms. You got to talk to your doctor about that. Secondly, something's going on with you sort of emotionally, and some therapy would really do you a lot of good. You're in treatment. Why not keep going with this? Nowhere does our stuff come out more than in our interpersonal experiences, our relationships. That's when stuff oh, emerges. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. And there's something emerging here. And I, I we don't have time. To, I, I, I can again, I get a flavor. There's an abandonment thing going on here. It's like he's away, and she can't control it, and she freaks out. Mm-hmm. And she's gonna, what she's going to end up doing is pushing him away and... and as a way of, as opposed to being helpless and having someone abandon you, people prefer to actually make the abandonment happen right. as, as a more comfortable way of being in control of a situation. Oh, yeah. relationship. People always seem to figure out a way to do that self-fulfilling prophecy yeah. that create the scenario they, they fear so they much. They fear most. Because they, when, they, when they create it themselves, at least they're not helpless. They're not powerless against it. Or maybe she just likes the drama. She, Some girls are like that. She may be, but that would be more about her creating drama, not just panicking and you know, all the time. Yeah, panic. not the cold sweats. David? <laughs> yeah? Going to have to get some help with that slice uh, pretty soon, by the way, Lisa. David? Okay. Hello? You're 14. Yeah. What is going on? Well, uh, there's this girl that I like, and she's kind of a freak girl. And uh, I was trying to think of something I might be able to get her for Christmas, mm-hmm. but I wasn't sure exactly what I might be able to get her. What's a freak girl? Well, uh, she's kind of like gothic. She's on a bunch of antidepressants, and she goes to like three different psychiatrists a week. Mm-hmm. And uh, does she know who you are? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and does she like you? Yeah. I'm not sure. Do you think she's gonna get you a present? Cause it's oh, it's weird when you get someone a present like at school and they don't get you a present. Makes them uncomfortable. It actually doesn't bother me that much. All right, so you'd be all right if she didn't get you a present back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who is this, Vinny Barbarino? Yeah, no, you're supposed to say, no. <laughs> all right. Are he's, you on the treadmill? No. No, this, he's just, ha- he's just he's nervous. Just, he's having labor. It's, just, it's a Quasimodo. What is going on out you there? Ringing, you're ringing the, <laughs> the bell, Quasimodo? Ding, ding. What's up? Listen, turn the radio down, humpback, would you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what what should he get his yeah, girl? Mr. Carter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, well, let's see. What do you get the girl who has nothing? Black fingernail polish. Black fingernail polish there is nice. Yeah. Uh, just a black How sharpie a dark, is nice. <laughs> you get a little variety in the, in the, the you get some dark purple lipsticks and dark purple. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, bl- uh, you know, goth polish. folks like uh, taxidermy, too. Like pick up like a stuffed squirrel or beaver. Ew. Yeah, but it, it needs to be like a. It's got to be doing something. No, it like needs the, to be an exotic. It has like an executioner's hood yeah, on yeah, it right, or something. Right, 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 right. That's nice when they take uh, animals and they put them in human like jobs. You know, you take a little squirrel and put some suspenders on him. <laughs> David? Yeah. I'll tell you what I would do if I were you. David? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, uh, I was hope, I just hoping you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I think what you should do is you, sh- you have a thrift store by your house. There's about probably three or four. Three or four. I say you walk into those places, and you just sort of walk up and down until something jumps out at you. Good times. You know what I mean? She'll appreciate some, the some effort. Something will speak to you, because a goth chick is not going to want something from uh, Kmart. She's right. going to want something that's used, yeah. something that could tell a story, as, as only an abalone ashtray could. <laughs> you, you know what I'm She's saying? She's probably Wiccan, too. Ooh, Wiccan. Is she? And she's Wiccan. You're gonna want to get her some slim fast. Is she? <laughs> David, because they're all fat. That's Wiccans. Is she, she Wiccan also? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, How did I know that? Big gal. No, not really. Little chunky though, right? No, the the, the Wiccan goth mix is not necessarily the. She's uh, she's got a, she got some ass on her though, right, David? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and what is she? Fourteen? No, she's sixteen. Sixteen. Oh, all uh, right. She check back with that Wiccan at that uh, twenty-eight. See, uh, let's say three bells plus. <laughs> I mean, let's face it. You're uh, you're 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 chunky Wiccan. I mean, you got a little ass on you at 16 as a Wiccan. You're uh, 
you're uh, you're heading toward that. Uh, so he could go get her beads. some some natural herb or some herb garden or something. Yeah, something from nature. Yeah, Lisa, there you go. Lisa Durgan is our guest tonight. She's uh, on the cover of uh, this month's uh, Stuff magazine, also on uh, Fox Sports Nets NFL show. We will uh, take ourselves a uh, quick break, and we'll be right back. Love line. One eight hundred love one nine one. We'll be right back. Hey everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Lisa Durgan is our guest tonight. Lisa is currently on the uh, cover of this month's Stuff magazine. You'll uh, recognize her because she's the only one who's on the cover. <laughs> she's in a uh, hot pink bikini. She's uh, just climbing out of a swimming pool. and uh, looking... Just the thing for these winter months, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, looking uh, very fetching. Well, <laughs> hair's, hair's moist, but not wet. Mm. The way I like my women, Drew. <laughs> uh, Lisa's a uh, avid golfer. She's the uh, new St. Polly girl, or has been for a little while, a uh, ex playmate. Or are you always a playmate? Once a playmate, always a playmate. So. Right. It's like a Vietnam veteran. You know, you're not an ex Vietnam veteran. Right. You're just a Vietnam, right. veteran, yeah. Vietnam veteran, and uh, also on uh, Fox Sports Net's uh, NFL show. All right, Sundays, uh, 10 a.m. to noon. Ready to go? It's actually Saturday. It repeats on Sunday. Oh, re okay. Saturdays uh, after the Pac-10 game. Oh, it's a Saturday exactly. after I the I cover a lot of college football and stuff, but then my uh, updates are in the NFL show with all the boys. Yeah, you got uh, Chris Myers, uh, Tommy Davidson, and Michael Irvin. Yeah. <laughs> Tommy Davidson is the uh, Pizone man. He's crazy. Pizone? He's crazy, that man. I'll tell you, he's crazy. Huh. All right. Let's uh, talk to uh, Jay, who's uh, 22. Jay? Hi. What's up? Hello. What's up? Hey, um, okay, to the best of my knowledge, um, I believe that my friend can't decide whether he's gay or not. What does that mean? And, um, does, I think just, he's, what's, what's happening with him? Describe to us what's happening. I think he's, he's struggling with his own emotions, and he can't decide. What have you seen? Is he talking to you about this? What, what is the evidence? Um, he hasn't said anything directly, but... He's he's 22. He's my age, and uh, his whole life he's never had a girlfriend. Mm. But he's talked about girls, and he said you know that he's had crushes on girls and things like that. Mm. And mm. I see him watch TV, and he's interested in you know pretty girls on TV and things like that. Yeah. But uh, he also goes to school in downtown Chicago, and he has a lot of gay friends down there, and he writes for a gay newspaper. Oh. Yeah, and. Uh, also, he has a he has a a group Hold of. Hold on a well, second. He, uh, writing for a gay newspaper is like having writing having a column in a black newspaper or something. Like you got to be black, right? I would think. I know they don't have black newspapers because uh, magazines. Yeah, they black magazines. They got black newspapers. They got to have black newspapers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the fro. <laughs> 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 the, the Chicago pick. They must have. They must have some. They must have some. Be that as it may. Yeah. Uh, be that as it may, he has to be gay if he's writing for a gay newspaper. You got. You, you got to like blow the editor to get on the staff. That's what they mean by staff. You <laughs> see what I'm saying, Jay? Yeah. 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 You see what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Got Peter Lord. It's Punk Square. Yeah. Yeah. He's blowing guys. Yeah. Uh, Jay. Yeah. Have you brought this up with him? No, I haven't. But. Um, Are you gay? No, I'm not. I'm yeah. married to a woman. And he's been a good friend of yours for a long time? Yeah, he's been my friend since grade school. Mm -hmm. and, okay. Um, well, look, is it a big deal to you? Do you care? No, I don't. My question is, is like, I don't think he's comfortable with anyone else knowing what he's going through. So I want to know how I can try and tell him that I support him completely. All right. I would uh, go ahead, Lisa. What tell him to listen to what you're doing right now. You're calling on behalf of him. Yeah. But That's it's too late because by the time he hangs up the phone and calls him, <laughs> he, he'll be off the phone. I I think 
if you don't want to corner the guy and make him feel uncomfortable. He's got to just let it go and let it but, let but, this guy in but his own people, way. Tell you him. can let people know how you feel about certain subjects by how you react to just sort of what's going on around you. Oh, yeah. Bring up something that's in the gay magazine that he's writing for. Yeah. And you have a chance to, you know, express yourself about Yeah. It. Felching friend or foe. Uh. You probably just wrote a, a hard hitting expose on that. You can get into the nuance. I just learned that. what that word meant and that's nice. that's a doozy. Nice. <laughs> I see that as the as the headline, right? That's front page. Three F. <laughs> you see the gay editor at the uh, at the gay newspaper he's working for? He's got the he's got the felching friend or foe <laughs> over there versus uh Versus uh, the uh, there's a chap controversy that the chaps have been causing rashes in a lot of guys. <laughs> then uh, then the squeegeeing of the loose site uh, oh, yeah. shower doors yeah. is also in there. And there's oh boy, this guy's got a full plate, full plate. No, you let him know. Like like if 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 you want to let you, you can like you know where your friends are sort of politically. Like, like you're sitting around and they're going, they've legalized gay marriage in Hawaii. And you go, those fags. <laughs> Someone ought to blow that island up. Yeah. Well, you I get a pretty good to. idea. Yeah. If you said, oh, that's great. It's too, it's too bad more states don't do that. Right. Yeah. He's going to feel more comfortable. And, and, and give him open-ended opportunities. Like, eh, it must be tough to have to hide things like yeah. that. See if, he, see if he goes for the bait. But Jay might think he's wrong and he doesn't want to offend him, right? Yeah, I put him on hold. Oh, okay. Because he's not as exciting as we are. But hey, your friends, you should be able to. He's not. He's not a girlfriend. He's working gay magazine. Yeah, yeah it's <laughs> <pretty> obvious. Yeah. <laughs> Some guys are in denial uh, about it, though. It's not they're in denial; it's that they try to be straight mm -hmm. and they don't want to be gay. It's painful for them to come to terms with that, so they keep trying to make it straight. All right. I know guys like that. Steven? Do you ever date a guy like that? No. No. You. You, you could turn a gay man straight. <laughs> yes? Well, I wouldn't know yes. because I haven't dated a gay man. Well, you don't know because you <laughs> turned him straight. <laughs> That's what I'm so. saying. Steven? Steven. Caller who goes by Steven. All right. Uh, bye. Let's move on to Anna. Anna? Hello? 17? Yeah. What's up? Well, I don't really have a question. I just need a little bit of advice. All right. Uh -huh. Okay, I was going out with this boy, not boy, but, you know, my boyfriend for 11 months, and I, mo I recently moved away from him, like, mm -hmm. about two weeks ago, and he calls me all the time, and he always he's always asking me what I'm doing, where I'm at, you know, and it seems like he don't trust me, and I always ask him, do you trust me? And he always says, yes, but it just doesn't seem like it. How old is he? He's also 17. Yeah. And With That accent, she could not have moved too far from Michigan. Yeah. Well, yeah. no, we still live in Michigan. Right. All right. I just moved out of city. You're in the UP somewhere? No, I'm in the oh. um, lower peninsula. Okay. All right. The UP is the upper peninsula. Yeah. yeah. He's feeling vulnerable. Every 17-year-old guy does this. Even if you're in his presence, he's, he's like this. Yeah, but it's making me feel uncomfortable. And now I've seen someone in the past oh. that I haven't seen in like two years. Oh, starting to have feelings. So he's picking up on this. Mm-hmm. Well, You're sending the vibe. Know that I've I only seen him once, and he doesn't know about it. Well, what do you, what do you mean you only seen him once? Well, I mean, okay, I knew him in the past. He was, like, my old, like, I guess, stoner buddy or whatever. Listen, if I raised kids in Michigan, by the way, I would hire, like, a Julie Andrews type to come over <laughs> every day and, speaking. and give everyone diction <laughs> lessons. So, so everything didn't sound like a gold bond commercial. Go ahead, Anna. I'm sorry. Anyways, um, like, we haven't seen each other in, like, a year and a half or whatever, something like that. Mm -hmm. And he came over at it, like, at a, at a surprise. And, like, we used to, like, have an old fling. And my feelings are starting to turn, and I'm just getting really confused. How long, You're feeling yeah, how long are you going to be away from your current boyfriend? Um, Forever? For how long? For a while. How long? I don't know. Um, at least a year. Yeah. You know what the reality is, Anna? Yeah. Seventeen-year-old relationships don't really survive that. No, mm -hmm. and a, a year is eternal. I mean, I mean, re what would a year be? I mean, it's, what's it's one real, seventeenth it's, of our life now? Right, right. Forty, forty years. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. I mean, a year, a year really is uh, a lifetime to a seventeen-year-old. Mm -hmm. Impossible. It, it really, it's what it really is is about one sixth of their adult life. Right. Or one fifth even. 
All right. They've only been, been pre post pubertal for seven, eight years, six, seven years. My head's swimming now, buddy. You're I think you're also sending off a message. And Are you picking up on it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. All it doesn't right. matter if you saw the guy once. It's going on in your head. Mm. All right. So we say uh, you're 17. You're not going to see your, your boyfriend for a year. He's probably got the right idea. Yeah. Don't don't cling on to it. Yeah. Unfortunately, well, it's painful, but that's reality. Yeah. And, and everybody, if you're thinking about getting out of a relationship and a person comes up to you and goes, are you thinking about getting out of a relationship? Don't go, no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe go, yeah, I am thinking about it. Because why do you want to talk them out of something that you're thinking about? All right. Yep. Lisa Durgan is our guest tonight on the cover of uh, this week, I should say, this today. month's uh, Stuff Magazine out today. We'll be right back. Here it is. Bottom line, it sucks being single today. Tons of lame people and no decent prospects. Call the Dateline. Call the Dateline. Call the Dateline. 1-877-889-DATE. Love line. Love line will be right back. So get your problems ready. Ready. Hey everybody, Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Lisa Durgan is our guest tonight. Lisa is uh, currently on the cover of this month's Stuff magazine. She's the uh, super fox in the uh, hot pink bikini that was climbing out of a pool. Where'd you shoot this? Downtown. Los Angeles uh, LA Athletic Club. Mm. Have you ever been there? No. Is it nice? It's very nice. It's right in the heart of downtown. It's crazy down there. All the executives go uh, down there and work out? <laughs> yeah. They offered me a membership, but that's kind of far to drive for me, so. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. They're just going to throw you on? <laughs> They're just grottos, right? Just for free? Really? Yeah, it's part of the... See, I'm sure here's they'd the offer thing. that to you no, if you they were wouldn't. in a bikini in a pool. Oh. Well, <laughs> they, they would have me escorted out of the building. Here's the thing about business. You know, if, if, if there's a hot blonde and she's around, it, it's good for her to come around the club. You know what I mean? Uh, it, it doesn't hurt anything. Whatever money they lose on your free membership is worth whatever they gain by, you know, the guys when they give, giving a tour to a couple of executives from the uh, 18th floor and you come uh, walking by in a unitard. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Smart. Yeah. Very smart. Very sharp business. Yeah. Good looking chick can always get a job. Like, like worst case scenario, hostess. Right? There always is a beautiful girl. Yeah, always room. You, you go you... to a decent restaurant, get a get a hostess gig. That's that's the, that's the worst you can do as a hot chick. Hmm. Yes, hmm? you mm -hmm. should want to do more though. You should, you should, you should. But I mean, good-looking guy, his first job, carpet cleaning. <laughs> you see, what I'm saying, not me, but actually, yeah. I had attractive friends. Good-looking guy doesn't really get you anywhere at 19. D ditch digging. Yeah, it's like. They... Well, then that might maybe it works against you a little bit because other guys sort of don't trust you a little bit. No. Yeah. No, it's not that. It's just, that. You just, just suck on some helium or something? What was that? I just like <laughs> sucked on something. I don't know. But no, here's what I'm saying. Good looking guy, sort of neither here nor there. <clears throat> like work wise. Yeah. I when I was digging ditches, there was like uh four foot tall, forty year old, morbidly obese El Salvadorian guys next to buffed out nineteen year old good looking guys. <laughs> then, no difference. Right. They were in the hole too. Mike? I was talking about me when I was talking about 19 year old uh, Buff Down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. yeah. Mike, you're uh, 27. Mike. What's happening tonight, huh? I don't know. Maybe we're having some uh, line problems. Let's talk to uh, Elliot, who's 22. Elliot? Hi, Adam, Dr. Drew. How are you? Hey. Lisa, how's it going? Hi. Um, well, I don't really have a problem so much as I need a little advice. Um, 22. Uh, I've never been in a relationship before. I'm a virgin still. And I have like a fear of uh, rejection, mm. basically. Uh, mm. Like it's an overwhelming fear, pretty much like paralyzing at this point. Is it fear of intimacy or fear of abandonment? I mean, what do you mean fear of reject rejection? Like fear of vulnerability? I've had, I've had crushes, you know, on girls before, and I just can't do anything. Like I have a crush on one of my coworkers currently, and I just like can't do anything about it. Do you where, have, where do you work? 
Um, I worked in my school. I'm not going to say my school, but right. um, in office there. And she I works. Work. She's not a teacher. She works. No, no, no. no. She works with, she's a student also. You're a student. Oh, oh I see. You're a student. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm still in school. Yeah. But and, it's like just this fear where I can't like I can't do anything. I'll talk about it with my friends. I'll be like, you know, I like this girl. She's so great. Blah blah. And I just can't like say anything to her because like it's one of those things where if I don't see the signs that she likes me. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do it because I think I'll be rejected. What's interesting is that I think every 14-year-old male goes through this. <laughs> and, no, no, really. And somehow you got stuck in that. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, Remember this? 14 can go through it, but 16 and 17 but, can too. But 22, well, you got stuck there. Not somehow. usually 22. I never really developed my social skills because I didn't go to high school. Okay. What happened? Um, it was this big thing with my mother, and but I did get into college, but no, I never no. went to Tell, what's What's the big thing? What does that mean? No, it was just like a thing where I wanted to go to a certain place, and my mother didn't want me to go there, and she put me in another school, and I really hated it there, so I just dropped out. And eventually she convinced me to go to college. I went to college and like pretty much got myself together. But What were you doing while you were dropped out of high school? Nothing. I was at home just pretty much... Depressed? Yeah, actually I was. Um, at certain points, I, I threatened to kill myself a couple times, but were I... Were you hospitalized? No, never. I went to see a few psychologists... Um, but basically, college turned my life around. It gave me a purpose again, but I never got to that stage. All right, same so. with me, except you got to substitute college for porn. <laughs> porn turned your life around? Exactly. How? It gave me purpose. Oh, I see. I see. And, and an education at the same I time. I can't kill myself yeah. in this world filled with porn. I, I get it. I can't leave all this. Uh, um, you know, I think you ought to think of yourself. You ought to be a little easier on yourself, Elliot. I think you ought to think of yourself as someone that was like in a coma for several years or sick. And, and so you sort of, you, your growth was, let's use a, a harsh word, like retarded. It was slowed down. You didn't, you didn't get the normal opportunities for growth and development that somebody who's actively engaged in their life would. And you were sort of sick. You were out of it. You were pulled out for a while. And now it's time to re-engage and to, to challenge yourself and to take on, to develop some of those skills. Mm -hmm. But to realize uh, you, you can't go for the brass ring each time. You know, don't just go for people you're really, really interested in. Try to just explore, get some skill going, asking people out, dating a little bit, just hanging out at social And events. you like college. I mean, you're in a safe environment if you just surround yourself with friends and maybe she's in, in the group of people you're with and right. it's more safe. And But don't but don't be, you, you, to me, you, you seem like you have a lot of uh, shame in all this and just give yourself a break. Yeah. yeah I'm just going to say something, but forget it. Yeah, I, I'd like to do a study on why is it some guys can't sort of pull the trigger with girls and other guys seem to have no difficulty with that? I assume it's about confidence and some of it is just, all right, there's two, there's two factors here. Some of it is that's just the way you are. Some people are shy. Some people are right. outgoing. That's right. But I also suspect it's the way you, your parents make you feel at home. Do you feel uh, worthy? Do you feel confident? Some I mean, do you it. feel yeah. smart? Some of it is, is it. esteem, yeah. But yeah, some people it's... just have some people just have a comfort going up to people. Yeah, yeah. some some, some people, people do. need to tone it down a little bit uh, too. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, <laughs> Michael Irvin, Adam, Adam, Michael Irvin, Adam, Adam, Michael Irvin. Adam, no, <laughs> no, but th it's it's true that it, it's it, and it's also true that you can develop that on your own if you didn't get yeah. it at home. This guy had right. some trouble at home. Mm -hmm. but now he's 22. He's out from under his mom's wing. Mm -hmm. He's off at college. Just baby steps. Yeah. Don't worry about yeah. it. You can you yeah. can be you'll be obnoxious in no time. <laughs> Aaron, right here. You're 21. Yes, sir. What's up? Uh, how you guys doing tonight? Good. Good. All right. Uh, first time listener, or long time listener, first time caller. Great. <clears throat> um, I just uh, wanted to say that uh, mm. I know that you kind of bag on homeschoolers a lot. Well, yeah. Um, that's true. I was homeschooled in high school, and I'm doing pretty well right now, uh, career-wise. It happens. So, yeah, <laughs> and I uh, also had a question. Uh, I noticed you haven't been doing the lightning round uh, uh, toward the end of, end of the nights. Yeah, Aaron, are you high? No, I'm not high. What am I high now? No, Aaron. Oh, I Aaron. Subject us all oh, to that. They said Adam. Maybe he did say Adam. Maybe I am high. Aaron. Yeah. Yeah, hey, I appreciate you bringing that up. Uh, uh, for, first point: uh, homeschooling. Not a big fan of it, but uh, does work on occasion. Sure. Okay. Number. Uh, Number two, uh, lightning round. Yeah, I, I've been sleep deprived lately. Haven't had a lot of energy, and uh, but but we will do it next uh, next show. We don't have a guest, Drew. When is that going to be? Tomorrow, Thursday, day after tomorrow. Yeah, 
Thursday. Lightning round for you, Aaron. Thursday, uh-huh. buddy. Thanks, All right, good times. And uh, you can just uh, listen Thursday night. And Drew, remind me. Oh, yeah. You can, you can count on it. Drew doesn't uh, have to say anything. I just yap for uh, 20 minutes straight. I, I want to know why people want to have homeschooling. Why would you want to not go through Ask the him. high school years? I think high school is when you just, it's so fun. Aaron? And it's, yeah. yeah. Why would you want to be homeschooled? Uh, it was just, uh, I was able to uh, work a full-time job and do school at night. So it was. But you have your whole life to do that and have a job. Don't you want to go to the football game and... Yeah, make oh, out. You know. the <laughs> well, I didn't have a problem in that. I still played sports, so. Yeah. How, how did you do that if you weren't going to the high school? Well, in Colorado, you can play sports at any of the the big uh, high schools. So you would just school. you you show up for football practice every day, or baseball, or whatever. Well, I played uh, baseball and basketball, so. Oh my God! And and how did you not? Did you have a whole social life going also? Yeah. Oh right. Yeah. Did so you, you, he went to high school without going to classes. Yeah. What he did. Yeah. yeah. How'd you work full time? Uh, I just worked during the day and then did school at night. I know, but then, how'd you do basketball? Then, how'd you do basketball and baseball practice every day? When well, you got home, I mean, you'd study. What's that? When you got home after practice, that's when you'd apply yourself. No, I know, but how do you how do you work all day and go to you know basketball practice and baseball well, I mean, practice? It starts I at like two. Diploma, so I, I needed to get you, it you done. work from eight to three, practice three to five, homework to five to nine. Oh, Jesus Christ! So, and now I'm a firefighter, so. No, oh, well, good times. You didn't need high yeah, school. That is anyway. not the usual homeschooling. No, but also, experience. but that is I mean, you. You playing high school sports and and being homeschooled from whenever in the evening till uh, whenever uh, Barnaby Jones comes on, <laughs> or whatever the hell you're watching on Nick at Night. The the point is, is that ain't that. That's right. That's that's playing sports without going to high school. It's it's, it's getting the social and athletic outlet. Don't go to class. That's you. It's you. You went to high school like that. Yeah, that was me. There you just you didn't study in the evening. Yeah, and that's all, all the guys we had bust in, too, yeah. did that, too. <laughs> well, I just hung out, talked about football. All right, let's uh, talk to, uh, how dare you, Drew? Am I, Austin. Am I wrong? Yeah, it's I wasn't a great student. Sure, I failed driver's ed, but uh, in biology, and I was a ceramics major and never did take algebra. Carefully, he's getting major. very impressed. Mm. Never did actually physically claim my diploma because I owned the book room in 1995 for We the People, which is still, <laughs> I still dispute, by the way. <laughs> I'm about ready to go. But let me say this about uh, the high school diploma. First off, big deal. Oh, I graduated high school. Everyone look at me. That doesn't do squat for you. Number two, and I know I'm a little bit unique, but uh, I have never, ever had a job where that came up. <laughs> it did not come up. And it, sure, I went in a lucrative world of carpet cleaning and then into ditch digging. Well, but did you go to college? No. No. And I, I, I probably took a couple classes at junior college, and it wasn't an issue there either. Yeah. I mean, here's the, here's the other thing, too. And here's the God's honest. And everyone, all you people, just just lie. Just lie. I mean, I, we, I interview people all the time for jobs. And uh, they come in, and they plop their ass on the sofa, and you go, uh, where'd you go to college? And they go, Dartmouth. <laughs> and you go, oh, yeah, all you got, just n- f- figure the region of the country that the college is in and figure out the name of the football team, and you're done. Everyone's <laughs> out of questions. One out of every thousand guys you run into was an alum or something, and then you're screwed. Mm. You know what I mean? Because then there was like, where'd you study? Oh, we, we over Kennedy Hall or did you used to work? Mm-hmm. You know, but even then you could probably fake your way through it. But Drew, like, oh, what school did you go to? Where were the Lord Jeffs? <laughs> Amherst. Amherst. And it was in uh, Masters, man, Boston. Was yeah. it in Boston? Mm. All right, so you mm. just go, yeah, just go, where'd you? I graduated. Near I did Boston. my undergrad stuff over to Amherst. <laughs> Lord, go, Lord Jeffs, and everyone just sits there and looks impressed, and you move on. No one, no one questions it. No one looks up anyone's records or anything. You just lie your way right through <laughs> all, all interviews. You write whatever you want. Go down to Kinkos, put it on there. You'll never get busted. I mean, look, if you're going out for a job, if you're going out for a job, you're, you're going to be a doctor or something. you got to have some credentials. But if you're just trying to get a job in the industry or computers or something like that, just lie. So you went to a good college. <laughs> Pick a small one, though, but a good one. One people have uh, heard of but don't know where it is. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, yeah, I was up. Uh, Swarthmore, well, Wesleyan. Yeah, I was at uh, Willamette. It's up in uh, Salem, Oregon. People are just sitting there and go, uh. <laughs> And you go, yeah, strong economics program. That's really why I went. I feel like, okay, you're, I guess you're high. That's how it works. Austin? Yeah, what's going on? You're uh, 18. 
That's right. What's up? Uh, well, what's going on is I just moved to L.A. from San Diego, and I went under, uh, you know, I had a psychiatrist there where I was being treated for ADD and depression because I wasn't doing too well in school. And I learned about that when I was up at Lewis and Clark. Small yeah. school, but very prestigious. <laughs> right. Well, anyway, I had my brain scanned, this thing called SPECT imaging, but it's a lot of technical crap. Anyway, ultimately I ended up, I had ADD, and I displayed symptoms of Asperger's disorder. On the SPECT scan. Right. Uh, it's did you did you suspect that before? Was has anybody brought up that kind of thing? Were well, you... I knew something was wrong because my I, my IQ uh, is like one thirty eight. Yeah. And uh, you know my I basically barely graduated high school. I actually convinced them to put me into special ed so I could graduate at the last minute. You have social problems. Uh, do I have social problems? Only with uh, girls, and that's why I'm calling. Uh, otherwise, you know, I, I'm a reasonably good-looking guy, and I guess I have a good sense of humor, or so I'm told. Mm -hmm. And when I'm talking to girls, I might as well be like Donald Duck speaking Swahili or something. Mm -hmm. It's just not working. Tell you what, Austin, I studied this when I was over at uh, Cal Poly San Luis Obispo <laughs> before I transferred to Marshall. <laughs> I, uh, we did study this phenomenon. That's good. And that's quite interesting. Look at a series of spec scans. And series of spec, more than I can count or care to remember, quite honestly. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, it, my brain looks something like Swiss cheese. Oh, really? Oh. Well, yeah. you, well the, the, not the structurally, but the activity looks like Swiss cheese. Right, right, the blood plural. Yeah, and uh, let, why don't you just define your understanding of Asperger's? Well, um, I mean, my psychiatrist ultimately decided that I didn't have it, but the spec imaging s said that that was a possibility. Did you go, did did you go there? There's a center up there that does, uh, Northern California does a lot of spec stuff on ADD. Would you, right, did you I, that? Almond Clinic is yeah, where I went. Okay, all right. And um, ultimately he decided I didn't have it, but I do have some symptoms where uh, sometimes it's difficult for me to read how people's mood are in, like, you know, bringing things up in social context and things like that. Right. So Asperger's... Might something inappropriate for the okay. time. The, a, a great way to sort of think of Asperger's is, like, an Asperger... Asperger? Asperger's. Is it? Asperger's. Jesus. Be the world's worst chain name, wasn't it? Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a variant of autism, interestingly. Right. Uh, yeah. Interesting. And, and it, it... Like, a great way to sort of think of it as somebody with a severe Asperger's would be, like, an anthrop a Martian anthropologist like somebody who didn't understand humans, was just dropped here from Mars and was just observing uh. right. and didn't have a way to process how we interact, uh -huh. how to read emotions on other people, how, mm -hmm. how s groups emerge you know, right. sort of spontaneously in their reactions. They, now, can't, they don't process any of that. If, that. if that applies to me, I have a very mild form. Cause, Obviously. Uh, just talking to you can tell yeah. you have nothing much going on. But. Right. I, I, you know, I, people like me and I get along. I have a lot of friends, girls and guys, uh, and... Just when it comes to dating, I, I've never had a girlfriend or a, any uh, sexual experience like that, uh, not because I haven't been trying or anything like that, but it just seems that when I, when I meet someone, I, I have difficulty courting them, and I was wondering if it's related What to do you that. do exactly? What do I do? A little play acting? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, what do you do? What do I do? Yeah, how does he it can, manifest can, uh, itself? And I, I learned that word uh, manifest itself when I was up at Pacific College. <laughs> UOP? University of Pacific? Yeah, University of Pacific. Puget Sound. Yeah. The one where you got your degree. Uh, no, not up uh, Yeah, the Nigerian nightmare. Uh, Kristen Okoye uh, went to that school. <laughs> I see. At least will probably remember him mm -hmm. from his uh, Kansas City playing days. Yeah, <sighs> missed him by one year over there. But <laughs> uh, go ahead. So you're throwing a little specific something like that? Pow. In... Nobody knows anything well, wait, about the University of Pacific. Wait, what do you what, what uh, do? I do? What do you do? Life? Yeah, what do you do? Well, ask Lisa. Ask, in general? No, no. Yeah, uh, do a little play acting. He, he can he can ask Lisa. All right. All right. Ask ask Lisa out on a date. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, okay. What would I do? I'll make you feel better. I'm from San Diego and I moved to LA, so we have something in common. Okay. <laughs> well, I didn't have too much luck in San Diego, but. Uh, oh. Oh, thank you. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I don't know. I kind of what I do is I kind of keep going. Go ask her out. Ask, Come on. You just you just called her up. I just called her out. Yeah. yeah. She doesn't really know you. Yeah. We've, we've, we've met once or twice. Met. She'd like you to got get my to know number you. somehow. Thought you're cute. Okay. Um, Ring. Hey, listen. It's Austin. I got your number here, and um, I was just wondering if you wanted to go out and. Well, slow down, okay. slow down, slow down, slow down, Austin. Whoa, 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 Austin. First and foremost, you should have like some type of a a plan of maybe you know there's some event or something where a group of friends is 
you know, that you're all uh, going to some concert and you wanted to know if I'd like to go with you. Le- yeah, oh, that's right. good. But, Don't but, give him too much. Stay in character. Okay. Le- <laughs> let's go now. All right, Austin. Ring. A little small talk first, Austin. Like, hey, hey, hey. You know, Ring. So. Don't say I got your number here. Just say, hey, it's I, I beat it's off Austin. to the stuff cover. Stop it. <laughs> she knows way, you have her boring. number. <laughs> Stop it. All right, go ahead, Austin. Ring. Uh, hi, Lisa. This is Austin. Hold on. Lisa's got to Lisa's got to pick up the phone. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Ring. Hello. Hi, Lisa. It's Austin. Hi, Austin. How are you? I'm good. Hey, listen. I got a group of friends, uh, and we're going to an event <laughs> this weekend. <laughs> and uh, I was wondering if you'd like to come along. What event are you talking about? Uh, the Oscars. That's not this weekend. <laughs> That's in April, isn't it? Okay, say it was. Come on. All right, all right. Yeah, go ahead. Um, well, with a group, I mean, are, oh. Do I, do you know anyone? Am I, am I your date, or is this a, like a group of friends, or, I mean. Well, it's going to be a couple of friends, but I thought I could take you along and get to know you better. You know what? That'd be kind of fun, actually. Okay. I've never, yeah. Great. Now, yeah, it's good. See, yeah, but the, good. but the that thing is, though, he, it wouldn't he, work that way. But he well, it would have because he loaded it with the event. It was the Oscars, <laughs> right? He, 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 what, what would you actually be able to ask someone out for? Mm-hmm. Movie? Yeah, something like that. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So well, she I, mean, may, I, I, I do go to like premieres of movies and stuff. All right, you got I tons of opportunity, but you need to teach him how to read the signs. Yeah. You know what I mean? He, yeah, I'm pretty inept when it comes. I to understand. This. That's the Asperger's quality. So Adam, go. The stuff when they when they the, the hand drag that kind of thing. That oh yeah, the yeah. If if uh, a woman makes well, he, not over the phone. But they, but they but do I, that emotionally too. You know, it's woman, sort of, yeah. They they hang with you or they. Well, here's how, as you can tell if a woman is interested in you. You bring stuff up, like uh, you go. Uh, mm, what's a what's a new movie that's out right now? You get this uh, catch me if you can with uh, right. Tom Hanks or whatever. You go. Jeez, I saw a preview of this movie. Looks looks solid. They got four stars in the uh, Los Angeles I'll Times. Be, I'll I'm be the. Not... I don't want to go out with you. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, um, I hate. Oh, I, Tom Hanks. I just I don't like him. Well, you didn't you didn't think he was good in Bosom Buddies? <laughs> or, uh, he, that was retarded. Survivor. I don't watch TV. Castaway. I don't watch TV. Castaways. Hmm. Is that a restaurant? I don't know. I anyway. I I, I don't know. I was either going to do that or go mountain bike riding oh, this weekend. Bike. I, like, I like mountain biking. You do? Yeah. Yeah. You go much? Yeah, because I I go up to uh, Box Canyon up here. It's great trails. Put it put the bikes in the back of, of the that. Ford F one fifty. I don't like no no. You don't friend like of the mine canyon? broke her chin on that that trail. Oh really, <laughs> really uh, interesting. Well, it was either going to be the movie or it was going to be mountain bike riding. Wh- when this weekend? Oh, this I'm, weekend. I'm leaving the country this weekend. I can't. I can't. Okay, I can't. In, in that case, you don't have to get into the next weekend. Right. That's what I'm saying. Woman likes you. They're interested. She in would your, bring up yeah. the next weekend. You're interested. She would say in your not stuff. this weekend, but next weekend. It's it's kind of sad, but women have all the power in yeah. those moments. It's not and sad. They should they should learn to use it. Frankly, right. and they should learn to communicate what they have more clearly. Yeah. yeah but if listen, Lisa, if if a guy, if if you like a guy and he starts talking about a movie, and you want him to ask you out, you're like, I'll give him the sign. All you gotta do is go. I, I haven't seen that movie. I've been wanting to see that movie too, and that's just wide open now right. for him to go well i'm going this weekend you want to right. pick you up and you're done but but you don't shun stuff like no if you, if, and as a woman if you're into a guy you'll be into stuff that you're not even into yeah it's he's, true he starts but he starts talking about mountain bike riding and you'll go well, i never like your brother could have died right. mountain bike riding and he'd be like <laughs> i got my dead brother's bike and i'm thinking <laughs> of selling it but no you'll be like I never been mountain bike riding, but I've always thought it was cool. And the guy right. will go, "I'll show you how to do it. It's easy, you I know." Think and you're in. There's a fine line where the girl can smell it if you're desperate. So never, never show that you're desperate. Never show that you're trying too hard. Just be kind of just so pathetic. Low women. pro, and <laughs> we love the smell of desperation. <laughs> it's 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 easy pickings for us. No, it's Drew, is a woman being desperate is that, ever, that no. you were attracted I, to. Is that ever factor no. in? Men are like w- women when a guy is desperate or down. It's like. Fah, oh, she doesn't want him. Nobody wants him. I don't want him. But a male is sort of like a lion waiting in the brush when the antelope are going by. The yeah. ones trailing in the back. All the man just... Yeah. They get the it, one that can't keep up. He you know what? Uh, there's another suggestion. Sometimes when guys hang around other girls that are just your friends, it makes you more attractive to other women. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. The women, women don't know 
who's what? attractive and who isn't. They know who's attracted to you and how desperate you seem, and then they'll base it on that. Yeah. Which is just yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Like, yeah. if you're Lyle Lovett, the world's most unattractive man, but you can you can uh, bang Julia Roberts for 20 minutes and let the world know, then you get to screw every hot chick now because women are so stupid. They're like, Julia Roberts screwed him. I got to screw him too. Forget about the big beak nose and the crazy hair. I'll have sex with him too. Man would never go for that. No. Like, I, I, if Sean Penn was banging Rosie O'Donnell, be like, good, good luck, buddy. Enjoy. <laughs> Enjoy. How high is this dude? <laughs> and if he left, he'd just leave and that'd be it. We'd have no interest. Yeah. We're, 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 Women have the power. We're very pragmatic but, but that, that way. But it's pack mentality too that they got. It's but, true. And what is attraction for men? We know what we're attracted to. And for women, it could be one of many, many things. And we'll it's, see. Yeah. All right. We'll uh, take ourselves a little break. Lisa Durgan here tonight on the cover of Stuff. And we'll be right back. Hello? Who's this? Uh, this is Love Line. 1 800 Love 191. Love Line. We'll be right back. Mm. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That is uh, Dr. Drew over there. Lisa Durgan is our guest tonight. Lisa's uh, currently on the cover of Stuff Magazine, which is uh, out today. It's the uh, men's magazine. Good magazine. Got uh, her uh, more. She can't even fit on the cover, actually. Cropped her shoulder. Cropped the top of her head. But all the <laughs> good stuff. the title. All the good stuff is uh, there. Yeah, even blocked uh, the uh, two Fs from Stuff. It's like Stu Magazine. <laughs> Uh, also, uh, is the, uh, St. Polly girl, but is that over with? No, I represent them for a year. So it's what do you actually have to do? just started. Do you go to, go to like tool conventions no. and stuff? No, I actually, Star Trek. I already did the hardest part of the job. I already shot everything. And, and now the whole year, my name goes around with, uh, St. Polly as representing. They got like a it's, cardboard cut out of you. They put yeah, up at the liquor stores. You want one for the, the radio room? Yeah. Yeah. Well, not for the radio. Oh, right? no. oh no! He will, he will desecrate your image. I promise. No. No, I won't. You wouldn't do that. No, there's no <laughs> way I would put a hole in it and uh, take a coffee can and fill it with lard and duct tape it to the back oh of the God. hole. I would never ever I do that. I think we lost Dr. Drew. Drew. Please. Oh my God. I'm saying that's something I wouldn't do. Oh I can't believe you just said that. The oh visual is not oh yeah. too God. fun. No, that was oh rude. My God. I apologize. Mm -hmm. All right, but I would, yeah. Oh, like my God. One of those. Don't we have a collar? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we got a collar. <laughs> but if I could get one of those, like, uh, overnighted. <laughs> Ryan? Hey, how's it going? Hey, you're 30. What's up? Hey. Hey, guys, your, your show is great. Adam, you're hilarious. Great. I just had a question for Lisa. Yes. Do you remember a newspaper called Serendipity? Oh, my gosh. My high school paper. So your high school newspaper? I'm driving down the road. I'm like... Lisa Durgan. <laughs> no way. Yeah, we, we went to high school together. Oh, really? Yeah. And uh, you, did you write for the newspaper, Ryan? Well, I did after she left. I was uh, sort of like like junior guy. I think she was a year or two ahead of me. Yeah. And, 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 and Lisa, was, you I wrote totally for the paper? And I did. You were I think, I think uh, my senior year... Yeah, things like when, you know, they're cutting down the caffer trees. Fell <laughs> king friend or foe. <laughs> No? We never had any pressing issues, but... <laughs> yeah, totally like, what, Ryan? Really, really hot issues, but uh, well, that, that I was kind of infatuated with Lisa. Oh, as my with, gosh. With Smart. every guy at the high school. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're one of those. Yeah. Did you play any sports or anything? Um, I played lacrosse, but I think we started that after you left. Mm. Lacrosse in a San Diego high school? Yeah, we started Oh, yeah. Team. Wow. Yeah. We never had that at our school. I mean, really? The rest of the Rockies, you don't have lacrosse. Really. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know. Yeah, I yeah. thought you had to be in like Rhode Island or yeah. something to play lacrosse. No. All right, Ryan. So you didn't score. <laughs> what can you do? I well, know the names of every guy I dated, so I didn't no. date you, Ryan. I was, I was. Uh, let's see, skinny, 130 pounds, acne, braces, glasses. So. Oh yeah. It's all changed, right? Calling all nerves. No, now I'm, I'm 200 <laughs> with braces and glasses. Great. That's oh. good. Just, All right, Ryan. Good times. All right. Good times, buddy. <laughs> Bye, honey. 
Yeah, that's it's tough writing for the school newspaper because it's like, uh, like the like oh they want to they want to shift nutrition from uh, ten oh six <laughs> to ten twelve. And that's going to interfere with some of the kids' homerooms. So we got to write a hard-hitting expose on the, the nutrition time or something. Like, you don't have anything good to write about, right? I swear, one of my articles was about cutting the trees down on campus. I mean, there was nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Hey, you can... You we can, used to skip class that period. You can go on, like, the sports beat, right? You mm -hmm. can write about uh, the uh, girls' volleyball team going to city this year and that kind of stuff. But mm -hmm. if you don't have sports, you're kind of screwed. We had sports. I, was I know, but you didn't, you didn't. you didn't write... If you weren't on the sports beat in the school newspaper, you didn't. You're writing about trees, right? <laughs> and the school newspaper doesn't seem to cover like the Middle East and stuff like that, does it? You never no. seem to. Mm -hmm. A Drew school, they probably got into that, but uh, it was pretty apple pie. Going yeah, up. my school was. My school's like, yearbook committee says that they're gonna need an extra week this year. You know, it's like, <laughs> yeah, all right. Although I remember your buddy had the alternative newspaper out there. Oh yes, that was very edgy, Adam. Yes, well, we printed an underground newspaper yeah. at our mm. school. Our school was so screwed up. Our school newspaper, I only came out with one issue my uh, senior year. Of the school paper, or your yeah, the school, the school paper. Yeah. Like they couldn't get it together. The teacher was a stoner. And he couldn't, couldn't whip everyone into shape. They could never come out with the paper. And we came out with one issue the entire senior year. Like, wouldn't you guys come out with one every couple of weeks or mm -hmm. something? Serendipity. You know, I was watching that 70s show tonight. And just, all this just takes me back to that whole god-awful yeah. decade. True. Did you write for the school newspaper? No. You didn't write the opera column? No. <laughs> no. No, I, I could no. see you writing sort of a Heloise-type column. Like, the... Uh, the uh, fork farthest to the right, that's the salad fork. Never put you, like an etiquette, sure. etiquette yeah. column? Yeah. No, you didn't do that. I just published a book on it. All right. Matt? <laughs> yeah. You're 22? Yeah. What's up? Well, I went to a strip club the other night, and my friend and I were there, and I went with this one stripper, and we, she gave me a lap dance, okay? But it wasn't your normal one. This one, she uh, started stroking my dick, uh -huh. and then she started giving me light kisses, mm -hmm. and she... Uh, Outside of the pants? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got the... the well, that's more of a rub than a stroke. It's hard to stroke no, outside. Uh, she, she, was, she was inside my pants. She got inside out. Oh, and now oh. it comes out. Well, didn't okay. I say... And then Outside. she was saying stuff like... Uh, yeah, she was saying, a punchline here. Yeah. yeah. I, we don't believe you, this man. This is bogus. No, I'm serious here. All right, now we believe you. Well, I live in Las Vegas. Why would I not go to a strip club? I mean, come nah. on. Are you, are you, so, is he loaded now? Are you drunk? No. All right, gee. What's your question? My question is, well, she said I'd make out with you, but I can't. Because it's against the rules. <laughs> but I can put my she, hand she, on your No, pants. she wanted to. I didn't ask her. Yeah. Okay. And then she said, oh, you know why this room is great? Because me and you are here together. And it's it's just very odd. This was not your normal lap dance. Cause hold I asked on, my hold on a second. Calling all nerds. I can't believe he's 22. He's not... Uh... Did she do that thing on your Adam's apple? Don't it? <laughs> <laughs> the picture this guy with a huge Adam's apple that she worked like uh, Joe Frazier worked a speed bag. Uh, I think what Matt is Matt is trying to explain to us is that he got some action, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm guessing that Matt ain't uh, knee deep in action normally. Matt, yes, not not a ton of ladies coming your way normally. Um. Not really. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a good looking guy. Oh, no doubt, I, no doubt. I, Did I you work out in the gym a lot? I probably got about uh, 16 inch biceps. All right, but still, still not a big hit with the ladies normally. Lord well, knows I've you should them. be. You should I've, be. Yes, I've tried. I've I've asked them. Everyone I've asked is just they give you the answer. I have a boyfriend. Okay, okay. so so this, but not this stripper. That's the main she main answer I get all the time. She likes you. Time. Hey, Matt. So I'm trying to figure out whether she liked me or uh -huh. was this her job. Is this how stalkers begin? Yep. Oh, yeah. Matt. Yes. What do you do for work? I work at a 7-Eleven. All right. 7-Eleven. With uh, behind the counter? Or yeah. Doing, doing some just stocking. do everything. You know. All right. 
You're the main man over there. And uh, you okay? Uh, ever uh, been on any medications or uh, suffered no, any no. blunt force Not trauma to your head or anything? No. No, no one ever uh, whacked you with a snow shovel or anything no, like that? No, none of that. All right, all right. Well, I would suggest going back to this strip club, but it's tough. Like, is it 20 bucks a lap dance? Um, about 30. 30, because that's like 65 hours w worth of 7-Eleven work, you know, after taxes. Yeah. I and mean, that, that ain't cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah, all right. Well, why don't you go back and uh, see if you can find her again and uh, see what's happening with her. And let me, let me tell you the trick, Matt. Here's how you know a stripper likes you. Okay. She was a vast experience with strippers. Strippers, at least the Vegas strippers, can leave whenever they want. It's the greatest job in the world. It's like they can they can they can log on to their shift at ten o'clock at night and they can leave at ten forty five or they can leave at five in the morning, whatever it is. You say to a stripper who's giving you a good lamp dance, What time do you get off work? And if she says, I can leave whenever I want, you're in. Because that means she's saying Let's go. If she says, my boyfriend picks me up mm. in his, uh, in mm -hmm. his uh, 350 Ford uh, dually with the, <laughs> with, the, with the lumber and gun rack on it, he picks me up after he goes to the range at like 5 in the morning, then you ain't getting anything. Can I ask something? Why, go ahead. Wouldn't it bother you to date a girl that is a stripper? How dare you? I'm sorry. Uh, no, not at all. It <laughs> wouldn't bother you? No, not at all. All right. Because those I mean, are the guys I, that I've later been on. I've in Las Vegas my whole life. I mean. Uh, yeah. Wait, wait. It's, it's finish your thought, I, it, Lisa. It won't bother me. I mean. Uh, all right. Later all on, right, it will. Well, you always see it later on. They always say, "Well, I don't want you doing it anymore." Right, right, but then they yeah. met the girl at the strip right. club. Yeah. Adam. Hide why of would hypocrisy. It, Adam. Hypocrisy. Can you imagine <laughs> a man doing that? Can you imagine that? I could imagine yeah. a twenty-eight-year-old guy didn't have a lot going on in his life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's topless. Come on, I was a kid. I was 24, 25. Yeah, yeah. No big deal. She didn't stop anyway. Uh, Yeah, she stopped stripping. Yeah, just long Because you day. told her to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I couldn't. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. I didn't have any money. <laughs> you know, she made more money than I did. I was getting like eight bucks, nine bucks an hour swinging a hammer. Oh, life, <sighs> is, life is cruel, isn't it? Oh. She couldn't get a good gig. She had to work like a receptionist at a place. She was getting like seven bucks an hour, and the taxes were getting taken out. She had to drive into downtown every day, and she'd be mad making, at me when she got back. Because it used to be three hundred dollars an hour, three hundred cash, and at the beach all day. And now she's uh, fighting, fighting rush hour traffic both For 50 ways. Bucks. She's walking end of the week, you know, two hundred and eighty bucks after taxes. You know, uh, how long did that go on for? Uh. That went on for a uh, number of uh, months, number of months. And then she left. And then she stripped again. Uh, no, she stripped then while she was living with me, uh, I think, for a while. Uh, and then uh, then she uh, got another job, and I think she met some dude at that uh, job. And, mm. uh, oh. Bittersweet. Yeah. Kept in contact with my grandmother, though. <laughs> <laughs> Those two kept in touch. <laughs> Actually, when she dumped me, she moved into my grandmother's house. Yeah, Your grandma's nice. always been a big fan of yours. Yeah, it's nice to drive by the grandmother's house yeah, yeah. and seeing some dude's motorcycle parks in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> Working my girlfriend in my grandmother's bed. Oh my the God. one I used to jump into and eat oh, breakfast with them in the morning. Stop. It's great. Quiet, quiet, quiet. It's great. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I'm depressed. Then the I'm night sorry. you didn't see the bike parked out in front of the house, you'd uh, drive down the street and see it parked around the corner. You know, that's the other move, too. It's like, hey, park it down the block. Oh. Adam doesn't have that kind of range. Oh. He'll never do the math. He'll think uh, he'll think you're in there effing the elderly couple that lives a <laughs> caddy corner to my grandparents. Did you ever run in, ask for your baseball glove back? Or oh, it, oh. Was just, oh, it was so wrong. Oh, my so God. wrong. So wrong. And then I was living in this uh, apartment in North Hollywood that was like, what, it was a one bedroom, but it had this weird sort of loft on the top. It didn't have a door. It was kind of open, like yeah, this yeah. open loft on top of the staircase. No, no bathroom or anything. Right. And and the rent was like seven fifty a month. And but I that was that was the coolest thing in the early eighties, though, right? It was cool, yeah. but then I couldn't make it alone rent wise. Right, right. So I had this string of like vagrant guys come and flop up there for 
like six weeks at a time. Like guys who'd show up, like one guy showed up with a box and had like a windbreaker and two cans of Denty Moore stew in it. He's no. like, yeah, this is my stuff. I was like, oh, Jesus. These guys would need rides everywhere and stuff. They didn't have wheels, and they just oh. flop up there. And you know, my bathroom was in the bedroom. They they didn't have a bathroom they oh. use, and it, wow. I couldn't Those charge the them days. like half. It's just like give me 180 bucks, dude, and you can stay here for the month. Oh. Times were tough. Oh, I should have killed myself. God, <laughs> I really well, regret not times. killing Multiple myself. Times. Really regret that. All right, let's take a little break. Uh, at least Durgan here tonight on uh, on the cover of uh, Stuff Magazine, and we'll be right back. Line. Call 1 800 Love 191. Adam and Dr. Drew will be right back. Everybody, it's uh, Loveline. I am Carl. It's uh, Dr. Drew over there. Lisa Durgan is our guest tonight on the cover of uh, Stuff Magazine and uh, St. Polly Girl. I'll tell you one thing, this, uh, this bra's hot. Just close to drop a trap. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't know, after the coffee can discussion we had the last yeah. intro. Yeah, gonna need six foot cut out. Uh huh. Okay. Good. Richie? What's up, man? What's happening? You're 18. How's it going? Adam. Great. Dude, just up. Uh, just like, first of all, hey, I called in like a while back and I told you about Buena Park. You know how you guys are, ha- uh, how we have like the biggest fan clip for you over here? Yeah. yeah? I don't okay. remember that. Anyway, I have a question for Lisa. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, you're like really, really hot. Yeah. Oh my God. So I'm going to get that ah, coffee can. Hot, dude. Cut yeah. it. Cut yeah. It. yeah. Um, I heard something about you having like a, like a signing or something going on at, uh, at Tower Records in Buena Park. Like, in the next month or something like that? Is that true? That's news to me. That's Lisa That's Guerrero. <laughs> That's different. Really? I don't know. You banger hot, Adam. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Hell yeah, 12 ways yeah. to Sunday. Adam, Adam, Adam. Do you know what a shocker is, dude? No, what's a shocker? A shocker, dude? Oh, man. A shocker. You got to know what a shocker is, dude. It's a roller coaster, uh, but not no, very far. I, I, no, I don't think yet. Screw okay, someone in sock him no. or something. I don't know. I love his enthusiasm. What is this? No, I'm just, just. Oh man, this is cool. <laughs> anyway, it's soccer. It's like pretend. Okay, uh, you you put a you put up your pinky and you put up your index finger and your middle finger and you hold your uh, your other finger, your, your ring finger, with yeah. your thumb. Yeah, yeah. And hold it up. Yeah. And just imagine where that goes. Yeah. No. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you got it. Right. I can't beat <laughs> off this way. Are you high? <laughs> you kidding me? He's an idiot. What's good talking about? <laughs> no, oh, this wouldn't work. No, I need my thumb. Up. I gotta yeah, use my yeah. thumb. Yeah, I see what he's up to. Uh, oh, uh, oh, okay. oh, uh, oh, oh. It's because the girl's shocked that she's actually letting this guy do it. He, that. yeah. That's the shocker. Yeah. I'm going to give that cut out the shocker. <laughs> Gus? Yeah, right, shocker. Gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, use breaking my shocker form on the, <laughs> on the cardboard cutout. Perfect my technique before I try it on the outside world. Gus, go ahead. You're 19. Yeah, how you guys doing? Good. What's yeah, up? Question for Lisa. Mm-hmm. And I have a Las Vegas golf magazine, and you're on the cover. Mm-hmm. And I was wondering if you guys would have any uh, charity golf tournaments for the public to play. Uh, After she's done with the signing down at the Point Park Tower <laughs> Record, she's going to organize that. Now, I I sometimes play in tournaments, but they're they're like I I'm invited. It's not a right. public tournament, but um, I play in Vegas a lot. Uh, oh, yeah. You're a member at uh, the Riviera Country Club, right? Well, I'm not a member, but I feel like a member because I'm always there. Um, my coach is from there, so I'm always on the driving range. Why you you want me to you want me to invite you for a foursome? Is that what you're trying? Well, I would love to play with you. How about a threesome? Be <laughs> All right. Me, you, and your cutout. <laughs> be great. I'll give it the shocker. All right, hey Gus. 
Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, buddy. Right in the middle. Cool, yeah. I'm yeah. sorry, Gus. Yeah. Look, sorry. you're 19 year old. You're named Gus. Hey, you're not the salt in the Bernard. What's yeah. that, Gus? He tried. Well, at least he tried. He tried. Oh. Yeah. Must be nice. You know, it must be nice to be good. Like, I got a couple of sports I'm good at, but they never have any celebrity version of them. Softball, baseball. Yeah, I'm good yeah. at softball and play, but that, yeah. since I got kicked out of the Dodger yeah, yeah. stadium thing, it yeah. doesn't work. Well, that would happen to you at any sport, though, right? No, I, I get I get asked to play the golf thing, and I'm so lame. Mm. That's just it's embarrassing. But, but I would never turn it down. That's why you're asked to play in them because you're the entertainment. You mean my my lameness out on the on the links yeah. makes for uh, big every, laughs for everybody. If yeah. everybody was good, it wouldn't be so fun, you know. Yeah, there's a but, lot of spectators at these events. Yeah, but there's 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 sort of lame like um, uh, who's the uh, old piano player? Uh, Victor Borgia, Borga. <laughs> Victor Borga, mm. he was a piano player, and he was funny because he was a bad piano player, mm -hmm. but he was really good. Right. There's bad good, and then there's just bad bad. You right. know, there's thrown off the driving range for shanking him into the tennis court bad. That's me. <laughs> there's embarrassing bad. You see what I'm well, saying? Why do you Why do you keep going to these? Because they're free, and the booze is good, <clears> and, you know, and it's a good time. And then one time, I almost uh, won a Mercedes. Really? You know, do hole this, in uh, one? Do that hole Part in three? one thing. Yeah, it was a par three. It was 200 yards. We're up on a little hill. And uh, for some reason, I, I just got like a fairway wood out to uh, tee off with because I didn't want to go with the irons. And uh, I whacked, I guess it was like a five wood mm. and uh, hit a line drive that was going directly at the pin. <laughs> now, it wasn't going to go in. But, but it, it hit the pin. It was going to hit the pin. Wow. Yeah, but it was like, like someone shot it out of a can. It was like 10 feet off the ground, and it went the entire distance. But I was like, oh, my God, it's going at the pin. And there's this uh, $90,000 Mercedes uh, sitting behind me, and I start to go berserk, and I uh, naturally <laughs> shot right past the pin and uh, went, in, went into the bunker. So you've never had a hole in one? No. 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 I'm guessing you have? No, uh -huh. actually. Uh-huh. I've been about six inches away from a hole in one but that's about as close mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how many yards away <laughs> six inches yeah but how many yards oh it was par three mm -hmm. i'd say it was about 175 175 mm -hmm. what were you hitting off the tee i actually used a uh, seven wood seven what a girl it's you a, know oh, i sometimes go for the woods i see i didn't even know there was a seven wood yeah, there is yeah. High, high. It goes high and oh, long. That's not. Do most guys have that in their bags. No the guy wood? grabs the seven wood. Aha! Uh -huh. All right. Well, I knew I didn't know it for a reason. Otherwise, yeah. I should probably learn how to hit it. Uh, All right, Drew. Yeah. Huh? Good. I'm listening. All right. We'll be back. Here it is. Bottom line, it sucks being single today. Tons of lame people and no decent prospects. Call the Dateline. Call the Dateline. Call the Dateline. One eight seven seven eight eight nine date. Love line. Love line will be right back. So get your problems ready. Ready. Well, there's the show. I want to thank uh, Lisa Durgan for coming in here and being such a delight. Thank putting up you. with Drew's nonsense with the coffee can and the cutout and all that stuff. Oh, my God, Adam. That's <sighs> where we got to talk. Yeah. <laughs> uh, cover stuff and uh, Fox Sports Net and uh, St. Polly Girl, and uh, it's all good. Look for her uh, on a uh, course near you. Thanks, good, uh, guys. Nice meeting you. Nice to meet you, too. So until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying... Mahalo. I'll trust you a little bit. No. Yeah. No, it's not that. It's just, that. You just, just suck up no. some helium or something? What was I that? Just, no. Yeah. No. Yeah. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.